Hi, my name is Eric Bennett, Controls Product Manager with Arizona USA. And my name is Greg Duffy, I'm a Senior Controls Engineer at Arizona USA. Uh, we wanted to talk to everyone today about uh, AirZen, give you some background information on the company, and uh, as well as talk to you about where we are with control systems today. Uh, AirZen is a 150-year-old company manufacturing blower uh, and screw blower technology. Uh, we make three different technologies that are primarily used in the wastewater business. Uh, Trilobe PD blower, a hybrid uh, screw compressor that's optimized for pressure seen in the wastewater industry, as well as a, uh, a permanent magnet airfoil bearing turbo blower. Uh, so these blower technologies have been getting increasingly complex over the years. In the past, uh, a simple PD blower would have a temperature switch on it and there wasn't much else to it. If the temperature sw switch were to trip, you shut your system down. Uh, but now as these systems are becoming more efficient, the tolerances are becoming tighter, uh, the monitoring demands of these systems uh, need to be much higher. So typical today is you'll see a package, instead of a switch, it'll have a uh, ceramic load cell pressure transducer for monitoring oil pressure, discharge pressure, intake pressures. You'll also see RTDs to monitor motor temperature, blower temperature, discharge temperature, enclosure temperatures. And all of these signals need to be received by a control system and then there have to be uh, alarms and faults associated with those to protect the blower system. So Airzen has uh, developed controls specific to each one of their blower technologies that we can offer to our customer. We can either provide that in our microcontroller format, uh, which is uh, Ethernet IP compatible, or we can do that in uh, Allen Bradley uh, capacity as well. Um, so initially, Airzen was working with uh, different controls vendors. Oftentimes it would be a systems integrator that was awarded a project, and we would kind of have to guide them for how to do the controls to make sure that our blower was properly protected. And over the years, we realized that some of these systems integrators weren't necessarily equipped uh, to provide the monitoring systems necessary for our machines. So it was a considerable amount of uh, you know, consulting that we did to the systems integrator before they got the system right, so to speak. Uh, we realized that there was a lot of value in us bringing that in-house so we could ensure that our equipment was protected. Uh, it didn't stop at just the blower itself. Uh, it became a master control panel where, and I'll say it was the turbo blower especially, where we pay, became responsible for starting and stopping and sequencing these different machines because we understood the operating parameters of them and we knew how to run them to achieve the best possible efficiency of the machine. Um, now ultimately, the output of the blower was dependent on process variables. And if we weren't looking at the process variables, uh, we couldn't necessarily optimize the whole application. Now I'm going to hand it over to Greg and I'd like you to go into some greater detail with the air process. Yeah, sure. Um, this here is, a, is our air process. This, as Eric was uh, explaining, is a one part uh, dissolved oxygen controller, one part blower master control panel. Uh, we've been able to encapsulate our expertise in terms of process control and operation of our blowers, and we hope that this uh, provides an all-encompassing solution for a number of our customers uh, for managing their assets and as well as uh, meeting the uh, demands of their process. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the features and benefits of this system. Um, one of the things that makes our process a little bit different is that its control strategy is, is developed specifically for the dissolved oxygen problem. Uh, that is to say, this is not an industrial control strategy which has been adopted uh, for this application, but it's one that's been built from the ground up specifically to address the concerns of the customer and the problems created by the dynamic process that is wastewater treatment. Um, we handle this in two different ways. Um, we, we begin by handling the production of airflow. Uh, this is done by conducting the blower system in such a way, as Eric was saying, um, uh, in, in a manner most conducive to the highest e uh, efficiencies that the unit is uh, capable of performing at. Uh, and then we also manage the distribution of this airflow by uh, modulating the automated control valves. I'd also like to talk about um, our, our support of this unit. Um, in, in terms of um, uh, cradle to grave, um, Eric is going to take you all the way through the sales process, um, then I'm going to help you on the back end. Um, it's something that we work together for. Um, in, in terms of on-site on -site startup, we bring you completely through the commissioning process and making sure that we meet every, uh, every last detail of the specification. Uh, we can provide instrumentation 
uh, and we can bring that into the system as well. Uh, would you like to kind of talk them through what type, type of instrumentation we use? Uh, absolutely. So uh, to, to uh, have one of these systems be successful, it requires uh, analytical instruments to monitor DO. And in some cases, we're using ammonia signals to adjust that DO setting. Uh, as Greg mentioned before, this is not a just industrial controller applied to DO. Uh, most industrial controllers use a PID loop, which is a control strategy that works really well for a linear process. But the problem with DO is it's not linear. And the curve of the DO process itself changes with many different variables, uh, high loading, low loading, temperatures, uh, how saturated the water is with dissolved oxygen. All of those changes change the rate of response of the dissolved oxygen process. So our control strategy is specific to the biology. And that's very important that this is not just a modified industrial control. This was developed specifically based on the biological process that is activated sludge. Uh, I mentioned analytical devices, ammonia monitoring, DO monitoring, and we're also looking at flow meters. Um, flow meters in conjunction with uh, airflow control valves. Um, we monitor each zone and the DO requirements of that zone, and we calculate an airflow requirement for each one of those zones. We then totalize that sum of the airflow and then manage the blowers to output that amount of air. The valves are then used to distribute that airflow using a flow-based, most open valve process. Now, when we work with our customer, we work with them and review the blower application to determine which blower is optimal in terms of energy efficiency and operational flexibility for them system. And then we'll also go over their process requirements. And we will work with them up front to pick out the instrumentation and decide how that's going to be integrated with the system. I'll say traditionally VFDs and, and microcontrollers get uh, integrated with an Ethernet connection, uh, but most operators like to have field devices integrated with a 4 to 20 because it's very easy to diagnose. Um, but we, we work through a concept, we provide a process flow diagram of how that's supposed to work, and we help you through the whole design process before the project even goes out to bid. After the project goes out to bid, uh, Greg will work with the customer to do um, to do HMI screenshots that are specific to that plant's operation. So we can customize our view, our trending information for exactly what they want to see. Would you like to talk about some of the trending that we do in our control panel? Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things we want to try to offer in terms of main control panel uh, functionality is the ability to, uh, to trend on a local level. Um, our control product is intended to interface with the SCADA or DCS system, but can also work as a unit process control system specifically for the secondary aeration treatment plant. And to that effect, it, in it includes the ability to be able to, uh, to view logs in real time. But it's, uh, it's important to know that not just as, uh, this information is not just displaying on the screen, but it's also being logged to a USB drive. This USB drive can be disconnected from the machine and brought back. Uh, it can be di uh, you know, digested by engineers. It can be used to uh, troubleshoot a process, or maybe just uh, make a small tweak in order to improve things. It's also a great opportunity to talk about remote support for these systems. Um, we had a customer just today that was talking about their concept for where they wanted their wastewater treatment plant to be, but ultimately there were budget restraints. So they were looking at several trains, and within each one of those trains was several zones. And the budget wasn't there for uh, airflow control valves for each one of the zones, but they could provide airflow control valves for each one of the trains. So we discussed building out the PLC to have all the necessary I.O. to support their future state but the programming would be supplied for their current condition. Uh, we then uh, uh, equip our control panels with remote support. It's an uh, encrypted uh, connection that the end user then allows us into the control panel. We can observe operational data and we can make modifications to the control panel. So the idea is that to be able to work with the future state and to be able to support the customer as quickly as possible. So we're, we're putting these systems in all over the country, but sometimes someone wants immediate support. So with a phone call and with customer access, we can see what's going on with their process control in their master control panel, and we can make any updates and changes that they might need for future expansions, such as addition of ammonia probes, or maybe uh, improving the control of a train by adding specific zone control within that train.
That's exactly right. Uh, we want this system to be able to grow with our customers, uh, and to that end, it's been designed in a modular basis. Um, we feel as though we can offer a number of different configurations, which meet uh, a number of different types of facilities, uh, biological uh, nutrient removal, um, all types of MLE processes. Um, we can even handle um, zones with uh, varying degrees of um, uh, coarse and fine bubble diffusers. Um, the reason why we can do this is because we use a flow-based control technology to control our blowers instead of a pressure-based control technology. That is to say, if, if the customer really does require a pressure-based control strategy, we can do that. But in terms of energy efficiency and process robustness, we do recommend the flow-based control strategy. Um, in order to utilize this technology, uh, that would require the use of airflow meters. Um, in the case, as Eric was saying, your plan is not ready to install airflow meters if it's not ready to go. Um, we can always make that amendment later, uh, and in the meantime, use a backup control strategy. All right, so I think that's it for errors and in controls. I uh, want to thank everybody for their time and uh, taking the time to interview us, and uh, certainly open to any follow-up questions. Uh, additional information can be found at airsinusa.com. Yeah.